now let's talk about air trapping and mosaic perfusion or oligomia. So this is a normal scan. Um, remember that each uh, part of this lung that we get here is a summation of air, air density, as well as the blood flow within that area. Okay. So normally, this is going to be even, meaning if you inhale, air is gonna get to is gonna get in within the alveoli, whether it's in this location or th that location. The same way, if you are of a normal um, vascularity in your um, lungs, you're gonna get equal perfusion more or less in this part and this part now what will happen if you have an abnormality in your vessel or small airway in your small vessel or small airway um, let's focus here on this picture on the right in this picture which is a coronal uh, image we see here that there are areas which are loosened, and there are areas which are of higher attenuation, okay? They're all, there's the same difference here in the left lung and also in there in the right lower lung zone, okay? So that is abnormal. When we see that mosaic perfusion, we're going to think, is there something wrong with um, the vessel? Or is there something wrong with the airway? We're going to think that because if you have a problem with your small vessels, um, you're going to get less perfusion to that area. Okay, that's gonna give you a loosened lung. And in this case, this patient had chronic pulmonary embolism which is a disease of the vascularity. In this example below, you, uh, the patient had vasculitis, also a problem with the small vessels. That's the reason why um, some areas are less perfuse, while others are increasing attenuation because they are perfuse or there is a normal blood flow there. Contrast these examples to the one here on the left. In, in this example, you also see a mosaic perfusion. You have loosened lung and then lung with higher attenuation. Now, if the patient, if this patient um, underwent an expiratory phase here, shown here, and you can notice that there is an accentuation of the difference in densities. It is much, much uh, higher in attenuation here compared to this area. Normally, when we expire, air is going to get out. So normal air is supposed to look like this, not like this. In this patient, there was air trapping or because a pro there is a problem of your small airways or you have bronchiolitis, air could not get out because of the thick walls of those small airways. Okay? Aside from those that basic pathology, okay, because of the thickened bronchiolar walls, another thing that happens in small airways disease is that because of decrease in ventilation, meaning air, some air went inside the alveoli, but that air does not participate in air exchange. So that's gonna be decrease in ventilation. The response of our body for that, decreased ventilation is vasoconstriction. Why vasoconstriction? 
it's because the body wants to divert or shunt the blood elsewhere in the lung where there is better um, better exchange so it's like a protective mechanism of the body so again air trapping is better seen in this expiratory scan and air trapping is defined as failure of lung to increase in attenuation on an expiratory scan now you might wonder is this going is this air trapping going to, to be seen if we take an expiratory phase in a patient with vasculitis or chronic pulmonary embolism if we analyze it if a patient with vasculitis would expire is the air going to be eliminated or is the air going to come out yes it is going to get out because get out because the problem is in the vessels not in the tiny airways so again in small vessel disease you will not have air trapping that's why when you have a mosaic perfusion or oligemia you have to take expiratory scans because expiratory scans will make you differentiate if the cause of that mosaic attenuation is from air trapping which um, which would make you conclude that it's an air small airways disease but if there's no air trapping you're going to consider other etiologies another utility of uh, this expiratory scan is during investigation of interstitial lung disease this is the 2011 criteria for um, diagnosing usual interstitial pneumonia there's some more recent um, addition to this but the point here is that uip in order to diagnose uip you must be able to say that there are no um, findings which would make you point out to other etiologies for example when you see um, diffuse mosaic attenuation or you can see evidence of air trapping you're not gonna call that a uip because air trapping is more characteristic of small airways disease okay so again expiratory air trap expiratory scans will help you um, in diagnosing UIP by making you uh, exclude the presence of small airways disease. Okay? So I hope um, that's clear.